The first thing you always want to do when programming in Inventor HSM is creating a setup. This is where we tell the software how things are located on our CNC machine, such as what we're machining, XYZ direction, location, and stock. Creating the setup is straightforward in Inventor HSM. Let's take a quick look. You can, of course, click the setup icon in the command manager. But another trick is to right click within the left command prompt and select setup. Starting from the top of the setup menu, you can select the operation type. Notice how Inventor HSM automatically provides a flyout window with helpful descriptions. This is clearly a milling operation, so the default option will work here. If this was just a single part file, I would not have to do the next step. But since this is, is an assembly, I will specify which one is the part model I am going to machine. This will be helpful if using automatic toolpath selection and when simulating the toolpath later. I will select the model button and then click anywhere on the model that I will be machining. Next, I will concentrate on the XYZ axis and the work coordinate system. The work coordinate system is also by many referred as G54 or G55 and is where your part zero is located. Out at the machine, your XYZ axis is pretty defined, but on a CAD models there is no set rule. Many times when you receive a model, an axis will be flipped in the wrong direction. Notice the triad or 3D gnomon display on the model that show axis directions. This is easy to adjust in Inventor HSM. When selecting on the model orientation, you will see many great options to control the X, Y, and Z. My personal favorite is select Z and X axis. By selecting the top face of my model, the triad will change the Z direction. Also notice that there is a flip Z axis checkbox in the property manager. In this example, my X axis is where I want it, but just as easily as adjusting the Z axis, you can click the X axis button and any add selected on the model will control that axis. You have different choices to select the work coordinate system. The model's origin, an intersection point on the model, and then either a model box point or as I pick here, the stock box point. This will take into consideration the actual measurement of your stock that normally is a little bigger than your finished model. You can control your stock sizes on the second tab. Fixed size box is the measured dimensions of the raw stock. Relative size box lets you add a little extra stock to each side of your CAD model. Also be aware that you can use from solid. This is a great option if you have a CAD model from before or after another operation, such as heat treat or coating operation. And it's also great if you're dealing with castings. In my case, I'm going to machine this out of a raw block of steel. So I leave it at fixed size stock. All I have to do now is hitting OK and our CAD model is aligned with what we have out at the machine. And we are ready to apply the first toolpath. 